Hey guys, Eddie the Magic Monk. In this video, I'm going to explain why I'm buying an electric car and in particular why I'm buying the BYD Atto 3. Uh, I'm going to start from the very beginning, my story about what happened to my old car and go into some of the articles I've read, some of the maths I've done to determine why I'm buying the BYD Atto 3. But just a disclaimer before we start that I am not sponsored by anyone. I don't get money for uh, reviewing or talking about any technical products on my channel. Anything that I talk about, I have spent real money on buying it and then sharing the sharing my thoughts and fixes with you guys and so on. So my story is, okay, my original car that I'm currently driving now, Hyundai i20. I bought this uh, in 2014, October 2014. So about uh, close to eight years ago, I've had this same car. Now, when I bought it, it was through salary sacrifice. I'm not sure if you guys know what that means, but basically before you get your pay each week or each fortnight, however you're paid, some of that money before you pay the tax, some of that money goes towards your car. So overall, over a period of time, you save a little bit of money. So uh, that's the theory behind it anyway. If you actually save money or not, you've got to do the calculations yourself. But basically, that's what I bought. Hyundai i20, I only spent $15,000 on the car. Okay, $15,000 is the cost of the car. Very cheap car. So I've never driven, you know, something very expensive other than higher cars, of course. So I kind of want to try something a bit of a a higher class sort of car just to see what it feels like. I've done all my saving money over the last eight years. I've saved a lot of money. It's not that big of a problem anymore. Um, so I don't need to just spend 15000 on a car. I can spend a bit more than that. Now, this is what the i20 looks like. Uh, this is about what it looked like six years ago. Now, I made this video when um, when I thought one of the reverse lights was broken, but it was actually good. But the car no longer looks like this, okay? it's The paint is starting to come off. It's pretty old. But the inside is still perfectly fine. It's uh, driving really well, and I'm actually going to give this car to my dad. And here's a reason. Okay, because my dad's car is pretty much broken down. You you can still drive it a little bit. You, if if you're lucky, you might be able to drive a few kilometers in it, but it's pretty much done. So I'm going to give my car to my dad and I'm going to get an electric car. Okay, so why in particular am I getting an electric car? Because... Currently in Australia, the fuel price, the petrol price, is $2.20 per litre. $2.20. It used to be about a dollar. Okay, I, I even remember the uh, cost being lower than a dollar per litre. But now it's $2.20. Okay, because of the war in Ukraine and all that sort of stuff. But... Um, so it's just gone up like crazy. Uh, normal people, I don't know how you afford it, uh, but it's just how things are right now. So my Hyundai i20, luckily, Hyundai i20 is quite fuel efficient. So if I top up the fuel tank 40 liters, I will get about 550 kilometers out of that. Now, 40 liters at 220 per liter, it's about $88, unfortunately. Okay, $88. Now, I usually top up my petrol three times a month. So my monthly cost just for petrol is now $264. Now, originally, you know, when the fuel price was a dollar, this might be $130 or something like that. But now it's $264. Maybe the fuel price, it's $2.20 right now. Maybe it will get even higher. Maybe next month it'll be $3. Who knows? The fuel price, it's uh, it's 
going higher and higher, at least from what I'm seeing. Okay, so electric car. If I switch to an electric car, okay, now in particular, I'm going to talk about BYD Addo 3 in more detail, but the battery is a 60.48 kilowatt hour battery. That's the capacity of the battery, and it can drive 480 kilometers in that battery. Okay, so 480 kilometers, uh, 60.48 kilowatt hours means that one kilowatt hour is 7.9 kilo kilometers. Okay, so the battery is 60 kilowatt hours. If you imagine one kilowatt hour inside that battery can run eight kilometers. So if you charge it to full, okay, you put your car on charge and the battery capacity is full, it can run 480 kilometers. But if it's just only got one kilowatt hour left of energy in the battery, then it can only run eight kilometers. Now, from the previous calculation, you can see that I top up my petrol three times a month. So that's about 1,650 1, kilometers that I'm driving in my car. This is how much I drive every month. Now, because my BYD, after I get it, I will be able to drive 7.9 kilometers per kilowatt hour. It means that to drive 1,650 kilometers, I will need to have 207 kilowatt hours of energy is what I'm going to use. Okay, that's how much electricity that I'm going to use. Electricity I'm going to use to drive that distance. 207 kilowatt hours so 207 kilowatt hours now according to my electricity bill uh, my latest bill one kilowatt hour is 20 cents okay now this is going to vary a lot based on which electricity company you with are you using solar all that stuff so you you have to do your own investigation on how much one kilowatt hour will cost you but for me it was 20 cents when i last looked at it so 20 cents now if i'm gonna use 207 kilowatt hours for the driving it'll only be 41 dollars so i'm going from 264 dollars to 41 dollars okay so the petrol price i'm gonna do that calculation right now the petrol price 41.58 divided by 264 is 15%, 6, 15.7% of what I was using. So it's, I've taken off 85%, 85% of my petrol cost is gone uh, from switching to an electric car. Okay, so if you imagine every month I'm saving, uh, Every month I'm saving $200, a year I'll save $2,000, 10 years I'll save $20,000. So I'm going to save a lot of money uh, just for the running car, running cost of the car. Okay, so that's one big reason um, why I'm going to get an uh, electric car. Okay, so that is the running cost, just a quick calculation. Now I'm going to go on to why I'm buying the BYD why buy electric car? Uh, I'm going to keep going with that. So this is probably why buy electric car. I'll get to the why BYD out of three in a second. But currently the Queensland government has a $3,000 rebate. So if you go to this link, all of these links will be in the description of the video. I've just taken a screenshot, but if I click on this link and show you the website, it'll have this. And it says the Queensland government, which is where I live now. It says that buyers of new eligible zero emission vehicles with a purchase price of up to $58,000, including GST on or after 16th of March, can apply for a $3,000 rebate. Okay, so what does this mean? This means that if I buy an electric car and the car costs less than or 
less than or up to $58,000. So it can't be more than $58,000. It's got to be $58,000 or less. Um, then I can get another $3,000 off. Another $3,000 off. So whatever money I spent on the car, I get $3,000 taken off. That's why I'm getting this car. It's it's just it's just uh, you you want to you want to get the discount when you can. So three, if the government is going to give me three thousand dollars. I'm going to use it. Okay, now let's look at the federal government. So this is the state government, the federal government, Labor, which has just been elected, is saying that as part of the discount, uh, Labor will exempt many electric cars from import tariffs, a 5% tax. So import tariff, which I'm going to talk about in a second, a little bit later, or customs or whatever it is, import tariffs, 5% tax, gone. Okay, so $77,000 is the maximum limit of the electric car. So if you spend more than $77,000, then you are going to be liable for this import tax or the the company that's selling it will be liable so the company is saving uh money because the government is not going to charge them import tax so the electric vehicle council estimates that a fifty thousand dollar model such as the nissan leaf will be two thousand dollars cheaper Okay, because obviously 5% of 50,000, 10% is 5,000, 5% 5 is 2,500. I don't know why it says 2,000. It's according to the same link. But um, yeah, the, the import tariff is going to be removed. So electric car, will you get a, get a bit more of a discount? Now, here's the second line. Fringe benefit tax exempt Electric car from French benefit tax, 47% tax on electric cars provided through work for private use. So that links back to what I was saying about my Hyundai i20. If you buy an electric car through work, okay, the your, your employer will pay a lot less to give you this car because they don't have to pay this fringe benefit tax. Now, this fringe benefit tax is usually passed on from the employer to the employee. So when I bought my Hyundai i20 through my work as a teacher, I was I was pretty much paying the fringe benefit tax myself. Okay, even though theoretically the gov uh, the my employer was paying it, it's actually me that was paying it. So if I buy it through work now, if I buy an electric car. I should be saving $9,000 a year for a $50,000 model. So that's something to keep in mind if you're going to buy your car through work, but I'm not going to I'm going to I'm not going to do that through my uh, employer as a as a teacher because I just can't be bothered, but you know, you can think about it if you want. Uh, I'm just going to buy the car outright without any loans or anything. Um who is BYD? Okay, now we're going to talk about BYD. Why I am buying a BYD car. So BYD is not a company that typically Australians have heard of. Okay, because it is a Chinese company. But that's the first issue that I'm going to tackle here is when you think of a Chinese company, you think, okay, well, it must be owned by a Chinese person. But what you probably don't know is in 2008, Warren Buffet, probably the richest person in the world at that time. I know nowadays there's, you know, uh, I don't know, Zuckerberg and uh, Jeff Bezos and Elon Musk and all those people. But back then, I'm pretty sure he would be number one or number two, uh, probably just him and Bill Gates. Um, but he was the richest person in the world and his company... Okay, this Berkshire Hathaway, I'm guessing, it's just, I think all they do is buy other companies. 
So this company invested $232 million, which is huge at the time. It's still huge now, but you can imagine 2008, how much that would mean. They invested that money to into BYD in 2008. Now, Last year, so this article was written last year, a year ago, a year and three months ago, it's worth $6 billion. So now it's going to be worth even more because, you know, electric cars and all that within the last year have just taken off, gone crazy. So I'm not sure how much is worth now, but a year ago, $6 billion of that company belongs to, uh, an American belongs to an American company. So, you know, you, you yes, Chinese company, but I'd, I'd assume quite a bit of that is belongs to uh, America, belongs to an American company. So not wholly Chinese. All right. Um, yeah. So if Warren Buffet can invest $232 million into them, you can... Think about how reliable you think this company is. But you can read this article if you want to know more about, you know, why Warren Buffet, the richest person in the world at the time, probably still in the top five, believes in BYD. Okay. And I'm just spending, you know, $50,000, not even 0 0.05 of a million. 0 0.05 of a million is what I'm spending. Um, but I'm getting a car, so it's I'm not investing in them. Okay, BYD Atoll 3. What is Atoll 3? Okay, let's have a look at that. What is Atoll 3? Let's click on this to have a look. So BYD Atoll 3 actually has another name in China. Because you can imagine different... Uh, China has a very different cultural background to Australia. I mean... Typical Australian, you're not going to know pretty much anything about Chinese history, the dynasties and all that. Uh, I'm just going to read out the dynasties. Qing, Han, Sui, Tang, Song, Yuan, Ming, Qing. That, those are actually the names of the BYD cars. They are all named using Chinese dynasties. And, you know, Australians will be like, what? what? Why is it called Yuan? Why is it called Song? Why is it called Tang? They, you'd have no idea. But um, it was called Yuan Plus. Yuan is a dynasty in China when the Mongolians took over China, actually. Genghis Khan took over a lot of China. Um, so it's called Yuan Plus, right? This car, when they put it on the Australian market, they call it Atto 3. Okay, Atto means speedy, energetic, and dynamic. Apparently, I got no idea where this Atto comes from, but it's called Yen Plus, okay? So why am I showing you that? Because then we're going to look at this website here, 16888. You can go there and look at it yourself if you want. Very big... Uh, Website for selling cars, a bit like carsales.com in Australia or whatever website, whatever the biggest website you go to to buy cars. Okay. Uh, this website lists a ranking of the best selling electric vehicles. Okay. So you're going to look at this and go, why is he showing us this? That's why I'm going to translate it into English using Google Translate, that's the translated version. That's the translated version. Now, the sales ranking in May this year, so now it's June, so that's why it's only got May because June isn't finished yet. But in May, which is last month, these cars were the most often sold vehicles in China. Now, this is how many cars were sold, right? This car model, Hongguang Mini EV, 34,000 cars were sold in China. Why? Because it's super cheap. Look at 
how much these cars cost. Now, this is in 10,000 yuan, which I'll explain what that means in a second, okay? Because you'll be like, what? Why is it 3.28? What does that mean? But it's 10,000 yuan. So it's like uh, 32,000 yuan. 3.28 times 10,000 yuan is 32,000 yuan. Okay, which uh, if you divide that by five, works out to be about the same as Australian dollars. So 32,000 divided by five is only $6,000 Australian. And you, you, you think, what? Or well, I'm going to be buying this car then. Well, that car looks like this. This is Hongguang Mini EV. That car, you, you're bigger than the car. You stand next to the car, you're bigger than the car. That's why, you know, yes, it's electric car, but I'm not, I'm not going to buy that. Even if this was in Australia, I'm not going to be driving this to work. Okay. So that's why we're going to look at. From number two, these are the real, I guess, bigger electric cars. Which manufacturer is at the top of the list? BYD. Okay, this is probably, this is the most populated country in the world. And electric vehicles are, you know, quite common in China now. They have a lot more charging stations i'd imagine then australia and all that a lot more people tesla is not the top of the list in australia it is definitely on the top of the list i mean if you think about electric cars most people just go oh yeah yeah tesla they don't even know other companies sell electric cars um byd is at the top beating tesla in China, this is like, you know, Samsung versus Apple. BYD is the Samsung of China, pretty much. That's how many <clears throat> people are buying this car. If it's a bad car, this logically, this is how I'm thinking it. If BYD was bad, it wouldn't be on the top of the list, right? Chinese people, they're not stupid. They're not going to buy a car from this company if not that many people are going to buy it if it's a bad company. Okay, so let's talk about the second on the ranking list, right? The car model Song Plus. Okay, as I talked about before, Song Yuan, Ming Qing, these are all dynasties in China. And Song is the dynasty before Yuan. So Song is the dynasty before the Mongolians took over China. And so I think Song Plus is a model that came out before the Yuan Plus. It's not as new as the Yuan Plus. It's been around for longer. It's an older model. If you think of Tesla Model 3 and Model Y, this is like the Model 3. But actually, just scratch that. But... Song Plus looks like this. Okay, I'm going to show you in my uh, OneNote. Song Plus looks like this. Very similar to Yen Plus, but it's actually bigger. It's actually bigger than Yen Plus, and um, it costs a little bit more. Okay, it costs a little bit more than the Yen Plus. Now, you're, you're saying, okay, well, Ado 3 is called, Ado 3 is called Yen Plus. Right, came out in February in China. So where is Yuan Plus here? Yuan Plus is actually down here, number seven. But this translated version, because Yuan also means a universe kind of thing, uh, meta. So that they translate it like that. But the, it should just say Yuan Plus, uh, seventh on the list. So it actually, it's actually. The fourth, one, two, three, four, the fourth most popular model, I guess, because it's new, not that many people have gotten used to it yet, but, you know, seven on the list, it's still quite a few cars being sold, 11,000 cars sold versus the Song Plus, which is 31,000. Uh, it's still a lot of cars, right? About the, just slightly less than Model 3, okay, so... Yen Plus, it's still doing very well, not the top, but because it's a new model, maybe not that many people have bought it yet, uh, but, you know, it's still really good. So BYD, very famous company in China, uh, a lot of it, 
well, quite a lot of it is owned by Americans. Now, this is a comparison between Yuan and Song. Yuan is the um, uh, the the car that I, I'm buying, the Addo Addo, and you can see the compared to Song, it is this is the length, width, height, and I'm not sure what this last one is, unfortunately, but um, the length it's slightly less, not as long. Okay, that's in millimeters, I'd assume, 4.3, 4,360 millimeters, and song is 5,465, so it's not as long, not as wide, not as tall, so it's basically a smaller SUV than, than the song plus, which is okay. I don't mind a smaller car, I don't want a huge car, I'm, I'm not that good at driving, I like a smaller car. Okay, so now here it comes down to the real question. Is this price for Addo 3 reasonable? Okay, so how much is Addo 3? <clears throat> how much is Addo 3? Um, Addo 3, which I'm buying, I've already bought, ordered from this website here, is called... Um, the, the website is called EV Direct, is where I'm buying it from. Well, you're going to see me buy it, but at this point, I've already bought it. So the Addo 3, the standard range, which drives 400 kilometers, I'll talk about this later, is $44,000. The extended range, which drives 480 kilometers, so 20% more driving range, is forty seven thousand, so three thousand dollar difference. Three thousand dollar difference. So let's talk about why there is a difference between the price in China and the price in Australia. So this is forty four thousand, right? Now, if you look at this table here, it says the UM Plus, which is number seven on the list. Is 13.7 to 16.58, uh, ten thousand yuan. Okay, so let me just explain that in a better detail. Now, this is a range because um, in China you can get the car with less things. In Australia, you can't because of the regulations. You have to have a certain amount of airbags and all that. So in China, uh, you can get the car for cheaper because they don't have as many regulations. Now, from what I can see, the model that is very similar to what we have in China is about 144,800 RMB. RMB. So what that is equivalent to in Australian dollars is thirty one thousand. Thirty one thousand dollars Australian. If you buy this car, if you live in China, you want to drive it, you only have to spend thirty one thousand. Now I know you guys are gonna think, okay, what? Why? Why am I spending forty four thousand then? Why don't I just live in China and buy it for thirty one thousand? Unfortunately, Australia. It's different. It's a different place. Okay, they're not trying to rip us off as much as you think because of some reasons why they've got to add on money to sell in Australia. The company is not, uh, from what I can understand, the, it's still a reasonable price. From 31000 to 44000 it's a $12,994 difference. But why is that reasonable? Because number one, you got to pay GST. This company, to sell this car in Australia, has to pay 10% GST, which is 3100 Okay, this, this amount, 10% of that, you've got to pay that. Okay, and then you got the $5,000 shipping. To transport a car to Australia, it's not going to be free. Okay, it's not like uh, flying a person over. It's a car you and the shipping costs 
right? The shipping via the sea uh, on the ship, obviously it's going to cost a lot of money. And I think that amount is rising as well because of the petrol price. Okay, so petrol price causing a rise in shipping costs, all that. So it's uh, <clears throat> shipping costs, it's not going to be cheap. Uh, the $5,000, that's probably from, you know, a year ago. It's probably gone up. So you got to consider shipping costs. And then you got the custom duty. Now, I, I know I said before that the government is going to try and scratch that, but, you know, the that only starts on July 1st. So the customs duty, the import duty, that's probably included in this price right now. If the company manages to import without the import tariffs, they might scratch that maybe, I don't know, but you know, right now, this three amounts, 5,000 plus 3,133 plus that, that's almost $10,000 already. Now the difference is 12,994. So now that leaves about $3,000, three or $4,000. Now, this car, to sell it in Australia, you need to modify it, don't you? The, to satisfy the Australian government, which has very strict rules and regulations, to comply with the rules, you're going to have to modify the car. You're going to apply to the Australian government application process. It's not, it's not an uh, easy thing. Australian government, you try to apply to sell things here, you're going to spend money. And then you need to pay the Australian dealer commission, right? You're buying the car from EV Direct, right? Who built this website, right? Who, who talks to you when you have problems? These people need to be paid. EV Direct, whatever company it is, they need to be paid. So, the three, four thousand dollars that probably needs to go to these things. So it's pretty reasonable. This price is reasonable, is what I'm trying to say. Uh, don't forget, I'm not associated with them. I'm just thinking on uh, logically sharing my thoughts with you guys. It seems like a logical price. Okay. What about the difference in the cost between the Extended, which is 480 kilometers, and the standard, which is 400 kilometers, um, $3,000. How does that compare? Now, the in China, if you bought the car in China, these three amounts, the difference is 2,817. In Australia, these two amounts, these two amounts here, the difference is 3,000. Okay, so it's almost the same, almost the same difference whether you buy it in China or in Australia. So to me, that makes a lot of sense. They're not trying to rip you off by selling you more for the higher range, which is why I'm actually going to buy the higher range. As you can see, I'm going to buy the extended. The difference in the range seems the same. Now I'm going to compare that with the Nissan Leaf. Okay, now you can click on it and compare it yourself. Don't take, don't take my word for this. You do your own comparison, okay? I don't know much about the Nissan Leaf at all. I'm just looking at the very simple math. Nissan Leaf advertises 270 kilometers. Again, I have no idea whether, you know, the actual car, how, how many kilometers it can drive. I'm just basing off the advertisements on the website, the numbers on the websites. Leave is 270 kilometers. It's $54,000. Leave E plus is 385 kilometers. So 180, 115 kilometers more, right? 385 minus 270, 100 and... <clears throat> 15 kilometers more. Uh... The price goes up by about a ten thousand dollars from fifty four thousand to sixty five thousand. That's eleven thousand dollars. Whereas the difference between these two, four hundred k and four hundred eighty k, is only three thousand. So again, 
to me, this tells me that I should be buying extended range. All right. Another big reason why I'm getting the BYD Addo 3, it has stock. According to the website that I ordered from, I'll get my car in September. Okay, I'll get my car in September. You buy a Tesla, you probably won't get it till two years later or something like that. I'm not too sure, but servicing costs, according to these websites, uh, you have a seven year warranty and battery, seven year battery warranty or 160,000 kilometers. I guess if you reach 160,000 kilometers, that's probably worth it. All right, because my Hyundai, which I've driven for eight years, this car here, it's only it's only like at 125,000. So if you can reach 160,000, <clears> that's probably going to be, you can reach out below seven years, you've driven it a lot, is what I'm trying to say. Okay, now, because it has this vehicle warranty, it's possible that you have to do a bit of servicing in order to keep your warranty, just like normal cars. So the servicing, they've partnered up with My Car Tire and Auto. So I'm just going to look up My Car Tire and Auto. They're saying that they service at about $199. This is, I have no idea what the actual servicing cost is going to be. There is no... Uh, published answer right now, but it seems like this my car they service people for one hundred and ninety nine dollars. So you're probably gonna pay that every fifteen thousand kilometers. Uh, this is a table showing the servicing costs compared to a normal car. So a normal car, petrol car, the service would be one thousand three hundred and forty. Uh, per year, whereas the electric car will be 830. So you still got to pay for service. You still got to pay for, you know, maintaining the tires and brake pads and all that. There's no engine oil change, but you know, you got other things that are the same as a normal petrol car. Okay. So if you want to look into more on this table, you, there's the website there. Okay, anyway, I think I've talked about enough. So now I'm going to show you the video of me actually buying the car. So what you do to buy it is you go to this website called evdirect.com.au and you can see that it introduces the car BYD Addo 3 4, 000, uh, 44,990 drive away, which is very cheap for an electric car. It talks a little bit about... Uh, up what the range is up to. So if you want this range, it's going to be more than that amount. Uh, but then it's got the pulse. So how powerful the motor is, what sort of battery. Click learn more and you see another view of the car and you can click the down arrow to go to the next uh, page or actually just scroll down. You see a blue version, seven year warranty, Battery and vehicle warranty terms, condition and exclusions apply. It doesn't have the terms here yet. I've inquired about it. It's going to take them a bit longer. Uh, AC and DC charging ports, 220 volts emergency charging cable. That sounds really good. That sounds like I can probably even just charge at my house. Approximately 45 minute charge time with supercharger. Sounds good. Efficient, intelligent, lane departure warning, really good intelligent cruise control. So all of these features sound really good. You can finance if you want, ultra safe design, uh, seven SRS bags, that's a lot of airbags, child restraint, a lot of space. 1,330 liters of space and um, power adjusted seats, right? The inside looks really cool. Power to entertain, sunroof. 
eight speaker system, rotating screen display. Sounds like uh, very similar to what the Tesla has. Bluetooth phone, that's uh, pretty obvious. Wireless phone charger. One touch open and close tailgate. Uh, anyway, it all sounds really good. Okay, so all new Adol 3 order now. There's a brochure you can download. There's a brochure and order now button. So just before we click order, order now, I'll show you the brochure. So this is the brochure. You can see it says energy awakening, an artistic picture, cool and fun, smooth and safe, and some more pictures, features of the car. Some more specifications in more detail. What is the overall length? 4,455 overall width and motor type, maximum power 150. Uh, acceleration 0 to 100 kilometers per hour in 7.3 seconds. Driving range 410 uh, to 480. So that's really good. And yeah, just a lot of features in it. If you want to go through it in more detail, here it is. Anyway, so now I'm going to go back and I'm going to click on order now. Okay, so choose my model. I'm going to choose the extended range, right? Because uh, the base model, the standard model is only 400 kilometers, whereas the extended one is 480 kilometers. So I'm going to click on that. And then I'm going to choose uh, blue, $700 for the blue. If you want free, it's white. So I'm going to choose the blue one, 18-inch uh, alloy, interior, two-tone included. So you can click on these pictures as well. Um, okay, I'm going to put in my po postcode. Order my Atoll 3. Oops, you got to click on your postcode. Okay, pick up from continue to pricing. Is my order. I'm in Queensland, personal registration. Vehicle total 48,000. 48,000. Uh, and then on road fee subtotal sixteen seventy six. Okay, I'm gonna go cash. So it's forty nine thousand is the drive away price. Uh, for the extended version plus seven hundred dollars and all these on road costs almost fifty thousand. I'm paying a thousand dollars today. Okay, so let's pay $1,000, order with card. So then I need to enter my personal details, billing address, card details, then I'm going to click on place order. Due today, fully refundable order fee, uh, terms and conditions, I'm going to click on that. Okay, so these are the terms and conditions. Design, specifications, price, and delivery dates are subject to change without notice. So basically anything here could change. On-road costs are based off your location. Each state and ter territory may offer additional registration types. On-road fees are subject to change without notice. Final drive away price may vary. Understand, order request, not a purchase contract. So we're not signing anything yet. It's just an order request. Deposit is fully refundable until purchase contract is signed. So you can ask for your money back anytime before you sign the contract. Genuine leather rebates. Do your own research. Uh, okay, so let's click on place order. Would you like to hear from any of our partners? Uh, yeah, whatever. Charging network. 
order number, check your inbox for your order receipt. Okay, so what's inside my account? Order number, email address. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, order receive in production, in transit, final payment, registration and delivery. Okay, so you can view your order. Here's your order. You can change your order. Does it let you change your order? You can change it. You can change whatever you put in. Right, so I won't do that. Uh, changes will be made only be saved when you press update my order. So we won't do that. Um, download purchase order. So what does purchase order do? Just a PDF saying everything you've ordered. All right, so there's my electric car purchase video. Thanks for watching guys, see you next time.